Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. You know, every two years, we begin a new session. And as we begin a new session, we have a new beginning. And with that new beginning gives us a new opportunity, a new opportunity to look at public policy and ultimately, generally in the first couple months of that new session, a new opportunity to examine the budget process here in Pennsylvania. And as I look at that new opportunity before us right now, I can't help but step back as majority leader and think of the successes and the failures of the last two years. There have been good moments and bad moments, moments of working together and moments of standing apart. And as I look back at the last two years, I try not to just learn from those two years but I also try to imagine, where do we want to be two years from now? Where do we want this body to be? Where do we want this budget process to be? Where do we want this state to be? And as I think of that question, I try not to think of it just as majority leader. I try not to think of it just as the legislator from the 62nd district in Indiana County. I try most importantly to think of it as a father. And as a husband, what do I want as a husband and father of three children from my government? What do I want to see my government in the state of Pennsylvania focused on over the next two years? And basically, I come to five different conclusions. Number one, I want a government that's the most effective, efficient government at the lowest possible cost to the taxpayer. Number two, I want a government that has the least amount of intrusion in my life on a daily basis. Number three, I want a government that provides for the core functions, the core responsibilities that we think of coming from our government. Things like infrastructure, education, and true safety net programs. Fourth, I want a government that protects us. That means fire, that means police. At the federal level, that means our military. And fifth and finally, I want a government that does the top four things on a daily basis without having to think about government operating, without our citizens having to worry, is government functioning today? Are our schools going to close down? Are our human services going to be there and be provided for our neediest citizens? Are we going to be protected in the case of an emergency? I want a government that functions. Today we have an opportunity. We've got an opportunity to bring sanity, to bring predictability, and to bring affordability back to our state budget process. We begin the process at this moment, at this hour, on this day, of restructuring and reinventing how government operates in this state. Now this budget may not be perfect, but this budget accomplishes many core goals that we as Republicans and Democrats say that we stand together on. This budget looks to address the major cost drivers that continue to plague our budget situation year after year after year, from pension and debt obligations to our correctional spending to entitlement programs. This budget seeks to bring those costs back in line with reality. And while doing so, this budget increases funding to pre-K through 12 education programs across the Commonwealth. And it actually completes a three-year commitment of this House to increase our investment in pre-K through 12 programs by over $1 billion. $1 billion in additional investments in our children's future are completed through this budget we're about to vote on here today. It brings down the waiting list for our neediest citizens who have been waiting so long for services they and their families desperately need and deserve. And it increases funding to fight the plague of opioid addiction across this Commonwealth. We accomplish those goals today through this budget without raising taxes on working families, without increasing borrowing to spend today for our children to pay back tomorrow. And this budget actually gets expenditures in line with revenues. 
it spends less money than last year's budget proposal. So today we have a chance. We've got a chance to begin the process of changing our budget, a chance to begin the process of changing our government. As we're about to vote on House Bill 218, I would leave you with this quote, ironically from a Democratic president in his inaugural address. FDR was quoted as saying, quote, there are many ways of going forward, but there is only one way of standing still. Folks, we have the opportunity today to not accept the one way of standing still, the one way of ensuring the status quo will continue to live on in the state of Pennsylvania. We can choose to have the courage to pick up the charge, to reinvent and restructure government, and to finally begin the process of moving Pennsylvania forward together. I encourage you to support this budget, to move this process along, and let's move PA in the right direction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.